Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be getting into the Word of God today, and I'm going to be extrapolating from Scripture, and I'm going to be talking about something in the book of Psalm, chapter 126. We all deal with certain things in our lives that bring us into a battle. Some battles get so difficult that we may feel like we're stuck in a rut or maybe even in bondage to something because we've been battling it and we just feel like we can't get out of this. Well, if you've been battling and you feel like you're stuck in a rut, I'm here to encourage you that God is about ready to turn your captivity. How do you get there? You have to have hope. Hope in the Bible means confident expectancy that God is going to open up a door of blessing. I believe 2023 is going to be the year of the breakthrough for many of you out there. So if you're watching, I want to encourage you, get excited. God's got great things in store for you and for me. And I believe that God is going to do some great things in our midst. So without further ado, I'm going to be getting into the Word of God. And I'm going to be reading out of Psalm chapter 126. And I believe that God has a word for you today. So Psalm chapter 126. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, I encourage you as you're watching to hit that subscribe button. That would be a real encouragement to me. And if you could like this video, again, liking the video brings... Um, traffic to this channel and it ups our, the algorithms and it gives us an opportunity to reach more people so they could hear the word of God as well. So thanks again for, our, for subscribing to this channel and I'm going to get right to it. Psalm chapter 126, it says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. So what does the book of Psalm chapter 126 talk about? It's talking about Israel, God's people. They were in captivity. They were in bondage. They were enslaved. They were captive to all kinds of, um, you know, bondage because they fell away from the Lord. And what happened as a result they got under a leadership, you know, they fell into Babylonian captivity. They fell, in, fell into Assyrian captivity. You see the book of Judges, and again and again, they kept turning to idols, and they fell into bondage. But also, the children of Israel, some of them, they were faithful to the Lord, and they were still going through the battles. And us, even if we're walking with God and we're faithful, God wants to break those chains. So whether you've fallen away from the Lord a little bit, and you're feeling like you're in bondage to something, maybe it's a sin, maybe it's a habit, maybe it's something that you don't like and you're trying to get away from, God is about ready to set you free because the Bible says, if the Son therefore shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. He sets us free. He's a God who breaks all our chains that have us bound. So you may be in a trial and you feel like you're in bondage. You've been into this thing. You've been waiting on God for five years, 10 years, maybe 20. I know people who've been waiting on God for over 20 years for something. They've been praying. I've seen people get answers to prayer after 20 years. I've seen people get it after 25 years as a pastor of this church. I've watched people get answers to prayer. God does it when we least expect it. He's a God who's a God of the suddenlies and he's about ready to do something. So just like Israel, God still blessed them. Even though they fell short, they cried unto the Lord. And even when they sinned, God loved them and he broke the chains that had him bound. And you know what? God wants to do the same for you. So what does it say? Psalm 126. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, God's people, you're God's people. If you're saved, you've received Christ in your heart. You're a child of God. You repented of your sins and you accepted the Lord as your personal savior. You're his child. It says, we were like them that dream. It's like when you get an answer, when God does something you've been waiting for for many, many years, and it comes to pass, it comes to fruition in your life, what happens is it's like someone who's like, they dream. It's like a dream come true. The Lord does spectacular things, and it's amazing how he does it. And it's like a dream. It's like, wow, look what the Lord just did. You know, my son was unsaved, and now he's born again. You know, my husband wasn't a believer, and my wife wasn't a believer, and now she or he is, is now converted and, and a believer in Christ. Or, you know, maybe I was struggling at this job, and they just promoted me, and now I'm, I'm like, 
in a high place of authority and the Lord has blessed me or my ministry, it was small and I only had a couple of people. I was praising God and I was faithful over a few things and then the Lord just burst it open and now all of a sudden it's just exploding. This is what the Lord does. You've been waiting on God for a spouse and you've been single for many years and you've been praying and all of a sudden God sends that right somebody to you right at the right time and it's a perfect match. This is how God is. He will set the captives free. If you stay faithful, even though you may feel the, the pain, the struggle, the, the trials, you know, you feel like you're on a precipitous decline spiritually, God will bring you back. He'll breathe life into you and he'll take those dry blown, bones and he will, he will just build you up again. This is how good God is. He's an amazing God. He knows how to do all kinds of things. So when God turns our captivity, when we are free from captivity, it's like them that dream. It's like a miracle that comes true. So how does God get us out of captivity? It says the anointing breaks the yoke. That's one. You need to be around the anointing of God. He will open up doors. He will bless you. Two, you have to have faith. The Bible says faith. When you believe God, faith breaks chains. It moves mountains. You know, he's the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So faith will bring rewards. That's bondages will be broken when we have faith in him. So be around the anointing. Have faith in God. Stand strong in your trial. Rejoice because you know what? When the captivity becomes overturned and you are free and God sets you free from whatever it is, whether you're in a trial or whether it's some kind of bondage you're dealing with, whatever it is, when God pulls you through this, you're going to be like, wow, it's like a dream come true. I used to I used to be an alcoholic. Now I don't drink anymore. God set me free. I used to be a crack addict, a drug addict. Now I don't desire drugs anymore. God set me free. I used to be struggling with all kinds of addictions, and the Lord has set me free. This is how good he is. The Lord will do it. And you know what else helps you? And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Know the truth of the word. Now, what does verse 2 say? He said, Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. What happens is, when you get your answer, you get such joy, such laughter, such happiness. You just praise God, and you're like, wow, Lord. One, when God turns to captivity, it's like a dream. Two, it says it brings laughter to you, the joy that's coming. You're in the pain right now, but you know what? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. That time is coming. Get excited. Get ready. Be prepared. Wake up every day believing God's going to do it. And um, it says, our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. You know what? We should sing. Sing brings joy. Singing brings joy in our lives. And you know what? When you get your answer, you're going to be singing unto the Lord. You're going to worship your God. I encourage you to do these things anyway before you get the answer because God wants your faith. God is looking for you to believe and rejoice. We should celebrate like we already have the answer. <laughs> we should be praising God like we already got the answer because the answer is coming. We just don't see it yet. We walk by faith, not by sight. And it says, they're going to declare the Lord hath done great things for them. So they declare the Lord is doing it. You know what? We testify. God gets glory. Now we begin to testify on what God did in our lives. I was sick and God healed me supernaturally. He did a miracle. Or God gave me this new job. I couldn't have done it without him. The Lord has saved my spouse. I don't know what happened. My child is wayward and all of a sudden they were against me. Now they're <laughs> reconciled. Do you see how the Lord does miracles? He's amazing when he turns the captivity of us. And he will for you. It says, the Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Verse 4, turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. You may have sowed in tears. You may have done things. You know what? You kept giving to God and financially you were struggling. You may have prayed and bad things are happening in your life. You may have loved on someone and they kept giving you negativity. And for your love, they've been giving you uh, all kinds of negative attacks, and you just continue going forward. Even though you've been sowing to the Lord, you've been getting trials. The more you do for the Lord, sometimes it gets worse. You've been praising God. The more you give, sometimes the harder it gets. Bad things are hitting you, and you keep going forward. You're sowing in tears, but you're going to reap in joy because that day of captivity is about ready to end. That trial is going to end. And what does it say in verse 6? He that goeth forth weeping, 
bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. That word sheave is a bundle of grain and stalks laid likewise and tied together after reaping. So it's a bundle or cluster or collection of wheat that we have been harvesting together. We're, we're bringing in the sheaves. We're getting our harvest now. You've been reaping. You've been sowing. You've been working. You've been doing all you can. And you know what? You don't see anything happening, but the seed is growing. You're going to bring in the sheaves. That's a bundle of wheat. That's a cluster, a collection of all of these things that you are bringing in as your harvest. You're going to get a bundle of his blessing. The wheat is coming in. You're bringing in the sheaves. God is about ready to do something big in your life. So get ready. Get prepared. You are going to go from weeping to rejoicing. You're going to go from difficulty to blessing if you stay faithful. Because the Bible says, faithful over a few things, he'll make you rule over many things. He says, despise not the days of small beginnings. God says, Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I'm going to do a new thing in 2023. He's going to turn your captivity. Go to Jesus. He wants to bless you. He wants to do exceedingly, abundantly above all you can ask or think. Just stay obedient. And you know what? Psalm 126 says God is about ready to turn our captivity. If this devotion blessed you, I encourage you again to put a comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. And I pray that you have a wonderful weekend. And may God bless you as you continue to follow his plan.